Hey there, this is Kenneth Moore from Zion's Watch Media. And in this next video, I wanted to take a look at a short story found in 2 Kings chapter 4 because I believe contained therein are very powerful principles from which we can learn from. And it's the story of the poor widow and Elisha. And we read in verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. Alright, okay, so here we have a woman who has two sons who is loaded down with an enormous debt that she cannot at and of herself pay, coming to Elisha. Now, in the Bible, a woman is symbolic of the church. So as we will see, the lessons in this story don't just apply to this woman here, but also can be applied to the church today. And we read in verse 2, And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Alright, so here we see that this widow is absolutely poor, and she is receiving counsel from Elisha on what she was to do. She was to gather as many vessels as she could from all of her neighbors, and not a few, and they were to be empty. Verse 5. So she went from him, and shut the door upon her, and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. Wow, amazing. God brought about a miraculous deliverance for this poor widow. And I'm sure you are starting to see some of the lessons in this story that can also be applied to the church today. Firstly, through sin, man has been sold into a poverty, a poverty of character, with little to no worth, the fallen nature. And it is when the counsel of the prophet is followed that Christ pours out that heavenly oil, the Holy Spirit, who restores the image of God in us, causing us to live holy lives that we can never live in and of ourselves. Thus our virtues are restored and our vessel is full. And not only that, this heavenly oil, the Holy Spirit, gives us a holy influence on those around us, causing their virtues to be filled back up as well. Secondly, in this story is seen clearly the lesson of divine cooperation. You see, God could have worked a miracle immediately to deliver this poor widow and her two sons from the problem, but he didn't do that because he wanted them to learn the lessons of hard work, resourcefulness, and preservation, without which no true success can be gained or kept. And these lessons would have proved invaluable to them after their debt was paid. You see, the greatest gift we can give to help the poor isn't so much giving them free handouts or free money, even though sometimes this may be necessary, but it is actually teaching them these principles that will empower them and transform their lives. Hard work, resourcefulness, and preservation is what the poor need to learn. Thirdly, the widow was to gather as many vessels as she could, and by faith she was to pour out her oil. She was to attempt something big, and in faith she was to expect God to do something big. Thus, she set a high standard in which God could display his power. And we too should do likewise. We are to attempt much just as this poor widow did. You see, the reason people so often don't achieve much in this lifetime isn't due to circumstances or situations, but actually because of the simple fact that they don't attempt much. Never should we be content with the low standard. We can expect great things from God if we are faithful and obedient to his commandments because he himself is great. Next, a crucial lesson. In this story, we see the importance of being faithful with the little that you have and just to start working with it. You see, this poor widow only had a little bit of oil when she started off. But as she cooperated with God, he was able to bless and multiply her resources. We too should exhibit that same faithfulness as this poor widow, no matter how hopeless our situation or how little resources we may have. Just start doing something for God to advance his work, and he will make up for the deficiency. So, the question isn't, how much do I have? But actually, what am I doing with what I have? You see, this poor widow was faithful with the little oil that she had, 
And as God saw her faithfulness, he gave her more oil to work with. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful in much, the Bible says. Another lesson. Why do you think God's providence allowed oil to be the only resource left in this poor widow's house? That is because, just as in the Bible a woman is symbolic of a church, oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, the church's greatest need and the secret of her prosperity. Without the Holy Spirit, this heavenly oil, the church will eventually lose everything and die at the hands of the wicked creditor, Satan. The Holy Spirit is the only thing that will cause the church to prosper and grow, to conquer over sin and the devil. Fifth and lastly, in this story is seen the grand principle of life, the principle of giving. Brothers and sisters, we are only able to receive as we impart to others, and our capacity as to what we receive is measured by what we put out. You see, the way to receive more isn't just by soaking up more resources or hovering over that one jar of oil, but it is actually by pouring the resources back out. Freely ye have received, freely give. The way to learn more isn't just to study, but to teach. The way to be filled more with the Holy Spirit isn't just to pray, but to go and bless others with the gifts that He has given you. The way for your church to grow isn't just to feed your members, but to feed those in the world starving for the bread of life. And as we are faithful in sharing the little that God has given us, He will bless and multiply our resources, just as He did for this poor widow. And just as this widow's oil continued to flow till all the vessels were full, so long as there are souls to save and bless, that heavenly oil will keep being supplied. Thus, we will constantly be receiving and giving, receiving and giving, receiving and giving, and so on. These are just a few of the lessons contained in the story of the poor widow and Elisha. I encourage you to read it for yourself and to go and find out more because there are many. And may we all apply these lessons to our lives and allow God to fill us with that heavenly oil, the Holy Spirit. And as we receive his gifts, may we pour them back out on others, other empty vessels. This is Kenneth Moore from Zion's Watchman Media. And as always, until next time.